This is Seth David from the world famous Nerd Enterprises Incorporated bringing to you another special screencast. This time we're talking about an introduction to product modeling with Microsoft Excel. Knowledge is power. Make an impact by learning more. Call me right now at 866-945-8070 for information about private trainings or consulting. We record the live session with you so you can review it as often as you like afterwards. Hi, so over this past weekend, I had uh, written a blog post about how to you know, set your goals. And I laid out a simple model that lets you put in your annual revenue goal. It lets you factor in something uh, like this where you know this, I can make this with my eyes closed. And so then what it does is it asks you for your hourly rate to figure out what you have to do. Or, you know, and you can also think of this rather than as an hourly rate as an average price per unit if you're selling products. But you, you know, some kind of average per unit amount that you can earn in order to figure out what you have to do to achieve your goal. So basically it says, let's take the annual goal, subtract from that what we know we can do with our eyes closed. You know, like let's say I, I know I have revenue from online sales that averages twenty thousand a year. You know, that that's that was the idea behind this. So without that, I have to make up the difference between that and my goal. So in this case, it's 100,000 minus the 20 means that my real goal that I have to achieve is to try and generate $80,000 of revenue based on $75 per unit. I laid it out in the context of billable hours, so this applies more to a service model. But if you're selling products you want to use this, you can. You just have to sort of convert the language in your mind or rewrite these titles, right? Because now then it's billable hours needed per year or you know units sold per year billable hours or units sold per month, per week, and so on. And then this assumes I don't want to work uh, Saturday and Sunday. So what do I have to do Monday through Friday in order to accomplish this? I have to do four units per day or bill four hours per day at, at, at a rate of 75 to, to do the 80,000. Then you can click on this tab and it plots the whole thing out for you. So how do you create something like this? Or for that matter, what I really want to do in this screencast is sort of show you how to lay the foundation for building your own service or product model. And since that one focused on services, today's we're going to focus on products. So we're going to give you an introduction to product modeling. Right? The first thing is what do I sell? Right? And in this case the answer is products. Simple question, simple answer. Let's widen these columns up. Next thing. Units, right? What do I sell? I or products, items. Right? If we're talking about QuickBooks, it's your item list. Unit A. Unit B, you start listing your products, whatever it is that you sell, whether it's shirts or frisbees, doesn't matter, you list them out. Okay, what do I sell these things for? How much, how much does unit A sell for? Let's say it's $4.95, let's say unit B sells for $15.95, and let's say unit C sells for $25.95. Okay, unit price, what do I charge for these things? Next, how many can I sell in a month? How many of these can I sell in a single month? And you want to be conservative. So let's assume the lower price items can sell more volume because they're priced lower. So let's say a thousand of these, eight hundred of these, and five hundred of these. So now we have the basis for generating what we think our monthly revenue is going to be. Let's call it estimated monthly revenue. Simple formula equals the unit price times with the asterisk. How many can I sell in a month times the volume, the quantity? And once that formula is written, I can copy and paste that down because remember Excel uses what's called relative referencing. So my D5 and my E5 here in this formula will become D6 and E6 and D7 and E7. It updates the row number based on the fact that I'm copying it down. Let's format these for numbers. And in fact, let's widen all these columns. I'm anal about this stuff because I just, it's so important to me to be able to read what I'm looking at and what I'm creating. You know, it helps me with my concentration. My wife makes fun of me about this sort of thing. That's okay. She's my wife. She's allowed to. No one else is. So what do I sell? I sell products. Here are my items that I sell. Here's the prices I sell them for. Here's what I th how many I think I can sell in a month. And based on that, here's my estimated monthly revenue. Let's total that up. 30,685. Now let's lay this out on a timeline. I'm going to cheat here. I'm going to grab the timeline I created in my uh, last screencast. Paste that in. 
So let's say in the first month, <clears throat> we're just going to say we're going to sell what we estimated. Okay. I copy and paste my total because it's the same. As long as the, um, the shape of the formula, so to speak, is the same, you can copy and paste them. By shape, I mean it references the exact same number of cells above it, right? So I can just copy and paste that. And while I'm at it, I might as well copy and paste across so I can get a total for every single month. Now, let's say we want to assume that each month I can increase my sales by 1%. So let's say equals that times 1.01, .01, right? Because we have to take the original and add 1% to it. So multiplying that by 1.01 .01 accomplishes that for us. Okay, and now let's copy. Now that we've written that formula, I copied it down. Now I can copy it all the way across. See, once you write the formula once, it becomes easy because then I just need to copy it over. So everything's adding on the previous by 1%. Now let's say I say, you know what? I don't know if I can really do this much because the key here is to be able to set up your goals in such a way that this is what I can do with my eyes closed and my hands tied behind my back. No question, hands down, I can do this in my sleep, right? You want to be that conservative about this. So let's say I look at this and I say, you know what, that, that seems a little aggressive. Let's knock everything down by 200. So we go to 800, 600, and 300, right? And that gets me down to maybe something that I feel is more realistic. And again, this is there's no right or wrong answer here. You have to decide. And this is what I do with my clients. When I'm doing a financial model like this for a client, I'll lay this out for them, but then I'll, I'll put this in front of them and say, can you hit these numbers? Can you do this? To me, this is where accounting starts to get excited because this is really not accounting. It's financial modeling, but it's, it has its basis in accounting, right? I'm looking at what can I do revenue-wise. I want to project this out. I want to do it conservatively. I want to know I can do this with my eyes closed so that when I then factor in the expenses into the model, I, I, I know very clearly if I'm looking at numbers that make sense, if I can make this business work and make it profitable or not. And this becomes especially important if I'm looking at a situation where things have taken a downturn and I want to see how can I make this situation profitable or can I make it profitable. So it's important to be real conservative. Now what I've done is I've written the formula in and I've copied and pasted it across. And so you can see it's pretty easy to do. Once you write the formula, it's a simple copy and paste. And I've got my whole year's revenues plotted out. Let's do a total here on each line item so I can get the total on my revenues and all I did was alt and equals let me do that again slowly my alt and equals sign tells Excel let's do a sum formula and Excel's pretty smart it figures out hey I've got a, a, a whole string of numbers here to my left I'm assuming that's what we want to total and it is so I hit enter to take that formula in copy and paste down twice and boom there's my annual sales estimate okay now, what we want to be able to do, though, is we want to say, you know what, that 1%, maybe we can do better than that. Maybe, maybe it's too aggressive. So we want to pull that out and set this up so that it's very easy to plot that in. So I go to my assumptions here. Okay. And the first assumption is monthly sales increase. And for now, I said, let's set that at 1%. Okay, so what I really want to do now is I want to change this so that instead of pulling by, you know, instead of being a hard formula, I want it to pull from here so that later on I can change this and the whole table updates, right? So let's name this. And it figures out that there's a label to the left, so it assumes that that's an appropriate name, and it is in this case. But if you want to name it something different, you go in here and name it. And by the way, how did I do that? Because once again, I went really fast on that. You can go to formulas and define name. I use keyboard shortcuts. But formulas and define name brings that dialog up. And it just gives it a name. And it says that name refers to this exact location, E13. Column E, row 13, OK. Now I've got a name I can use to reference this. So when I'm writing a formula, that makes it much, much easier to write the formula. Also, it'll be a constant reference. I don't have to worry about copying and pasting and you know where that's going to pull from, it will always pull from the cell. It becomes an absolute reference. So what I can do now is I select the first one that's got my formula. And instead of doing the 1.01, .01, what I really want to do is open up a parentheses and I want to take, I always want to add one to my monthly sales increase. So one plus, and I hit an F3, function three, for my monthly sales increase. 
And I, it gives, F3 gives me the list of any names I've defined. So I've only got the one so far. It makes it easy. I click OK. And that puts the formula in. And it's it, I didn't put the closed parentheses, so it's fixing that for me. Now I can copy this down and across. Notice nothing changes. But if you look into the formulas now at any point in here, it's basing it on the monthly sales increase. The fact that nothing changes is a good sign. It means I've written the formula correctly, but now look what I can do. And it's always good to format these things. If I format it for input here, that lets me know this is something I can change. This is something I want to change. So let's say I want to say, you know what, 1% is a little low. Let's say we can do a 5% increase. Watch what happens. Keep your eyes on this table. As soon as I change it to 5%, all the calculations update except the first one because the first one is assumed to be tied to the initial estimate. Okay, so everything else updates. So now I'm looking at much higher sales. But the beauty of this is now what I've done is I've extracted a piece of this formula and put it in my assumptions table so that I can easily come here and see the impact on my sales by changing this amount here. So stay tuned. We're going to be doing more of this kind of stuff, expanding upon this idea. And of course, if you really if you want a three hour class that goes over how to build a cash flow model based on your QuickBooks file, I've got a three hour download in my knowledge store. So just go to nerdenterprises.com forward slash knowledge or come to the new website at nerdenterprises.com. Go over to training, self education, knowledge store. And if you're watching this around the time it was recorded, you'll see I've got it pretty much right at the top here, Nerds Cash Flow Projections. You can come in here. It's $97 for a three-hour class that walks you through step-by-step -step how to take what's in QuickBooks, dump it into Excel, and then project it out to look at your cash flow. And stay tuned because that was a recording of a live webinar, but uh, pretty soon I'm going to re-record it in a format more like this so I can take advantage of the opportunity to be able to zoom in and give you a little bit better instruction and direction and a little bit better video quality frankly than what that one offers and anybody who's already purchased that one will get this one free of charge of course i hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day don't forget to post your comments and questions below wherever you see this video or in the blog and i look forward to seeing you on the web